I hope you really like the camera movement, guys, because uh, I'm gonna use this quite a bit. Maybe not for the main talk. Hello, guys. It comes a time in a maker's life when they want to take their Raspberry Pi 4 and put into a device to create a unique tablet. And that was the case with Raspad 3. However, it is a bulky device and slightly unwieldy. Thankfully, Seed Studio has got you covered with Re-Terminal. As you can see, Re-Terminal is much smaller, sleeker and a little bit more industrial looking, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Seed Studio has released this device based on Compute Module 4 and that's what makes it available in this form factor. So I was super intrigued when I firstly see the pictures of this device a couple of months ago, but I only got my hands on this device just now thanks to the Seed Studio and I thought it's a great opportunity to talk about the advantages of a device like that and possible disadvantages. First, it's probably the size. Even though I looked at the product pictures and I glanced over the specification and dimensions, I didn't quite realize how small this device is. I mean, the screen is five inches in diameter and up until I got the device in my hand, I kind of picture it being slightly bigger. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but you just have to remember the actual device size. I mean, it's barely bigger than your palm. But the basic idea behind this terminal or re-terminal is pretty simple. Take an existing compute module 4 and connect it to a carrier board to create a nice slick device with a touchscreen interface. And has the Seed Studio pull it off? Well, let's take a closer look. While the device might seem industrial to you, the actual shell is made of plastic, but it's not actually plastic, it's a really nice grade of plastic, meaning that the device should be able to withstand a bit of abuse. Just bear in mind this is not a dustproof or waterproof enclosure, so if you're planning to use something like that in a more harsh environment, you'll have to think about it in advance. But the device feel heavy and sturdy in hands thanks to probably inclusion of a very big passive cooling. I'm gonna talk about the cooling performance in a moment. In front, the star of the show is the 5 inch display with IPS 720p resolution panel with capacitive touch display. It's really bright, has nice colors and excellent viewing angles. Apart from these, you get a programmable four buttons in front and a couple of LEDs that you can change the way they blink as well. On top of it, you have additional button to wake up the device. There is also a gland in case you want to either extend the antenna or add the cabling going inside. And both side panels has been crowned with I.O. And on the right hand side, you have RJ45 for Ethernet. Obviously, this is compute module, so it also comes with a Wi-Fi in 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz bands and Bluetooth 5.0. Uh, apart from that, you have a micro HDMI, USB Type-C port for a power input and two USB 2.0 ports. Those are A, USB-A. On the other side, you have a 40-pin header which you can use to connect various electronics and extensions. And if we flip the terminal, you'll notice the high-speed interface which is a custom connector that connects you directly to the PCI Express slot. Now, the device is actually covered in mounting slots, including 10 different mounting positions with M4 screws and one quarter inch adapter at the bottom to mount it on a tripod. So you'll have no problem mounting this on wherever you like. As I've mentioned, inside you'll find Compute Module 4 with 4 gigabytes of RAM supported by 32 gigs of eMMC storage. All this goodness is sprinkled with a touch of extra sensors integrated into the terminal. You'll get an RTC, so real-time clock, accelerometer, light sensor and also a buzzer to make some weird noises. But as you already figure out, not everything is here. First, omission of USB 3.0 uh, ports. But what makes things worse is the fact that it's been a couple of months since the Red Terminal has been released and we yet to see any add-ons or extension boards. 
Now the Siege Studio is teasing what the Siege Studio is teasing us with the proposed solutions like a microphone array, camera industrial I.O. or LoRa One Support and 5G cards that you all would utilize that high-speed interface. However, so far nothing is available to take advantage of the port on the back. It's quite disappointing. What you should also take in consideration is the fact that the 40-pin header doesn't come with analog inputs. It only has one PWM pin, but thanks to multiple uh, interfaces like Word, I2C, SPI, uh, you will be able to add additional boards and reproduce these. Now that you know what this unit is all about, let's take a quick peek inside and see the carrier board itself. Maybe we're going to learn something new as well. The device is quite easy to disassemble, especially if you have a, such a cool screwdriver like this uh, ES15. By the way, review in the corner there. Once you remove a couple of screws and with a little bit of helping of the prying tool, you'll be able to get inside. Underneath the massive heatsink, there is a compute module 4, which you can swap for another one if you choose so, or repurpose it for another project. It means if the CM5 comes out in the future and has the same form factor, you'll be easily able to swap it out. A couple of more screws later and I've got the carrier board in front of me. What's really exciting to see is that there is additional SD card which you can use to flash your own uh, version of the Raspbian OS and follow the instructions on the Seeds website to have access to drivers responsible for all the extra features. Inspecting the board, I also discovered two separate camera connectors. One is 15 pin and one is 22 pin. So regardless of which ribbon you have at hand, you'll be able to take advantage of the board and connect the camera ribbon. There is even a slot at the back of the re-terminal to drive the camera out. Okay, that's all there is to learn on the inside, so let's play with it. So what is it like in use? Well, it's quite fun. First of all, it boots very quickly thanks to EMCC storage. And it takes around 20 seconds to boot and the touchscreen is quite responsive. Now I know this is a 5 inch display and it's not best suited for my thick fingertips, but I don't have problems using on-screen uh, keyboard to enter Wi-Fi credentials, etc. I probably wouldn't end up writing an article using that keyboard, I'll connect something via USB, but it's possible. The only annoying factor is the, well, the speed of a double click. No matter how quickly I tap, I still take several times to open the vault application that showcase re-terminal possibilities. I'm sure that you can modify it somehow, but I didn't get around that just yet. Oh, and don't worry, you can scale up the interface as well, so everything else appearing on the screen is going to be a more touch-friendly. I guess the first benchmark I'm going to run is going to be the cooling benchmarks, thanks to inc the inclusion of the fully passive heatsink at the back. I mean, this thing is massive, so I'm expecting uh, the cooling performance to be pretty impressive. And indeed, I had to run the stress benchmark with my new utility, you can read about it more in this uh, article there, for 45 minutes before saturating the heat dissipation rate. I was running my benchmark at 20 degrees indoors and it topped out at 55 degrees after 45 minutes of benchmark. However, it's worth notice that it took around 40 minutes to actually cool the heat sink down to the ambient temperature, which was around 35 on idle. It's not a massive surprise because at the end of the day, this is a big chunk of metal that is able to store a lot of heat, which is great if you're trying to cool the device in a very short time, but not so great if you want to dissipate all that heat out. Next up was to test the network speed. And in my test, I use EPIRF3 to bench it. And starting off with Ethernet, no surprises there. In receiver and sender configurations, I benchmark at 926 and 936 megabits per second. Next up was the Wi-Fi in 2.4 GHz band. So I placed it into optimal position around 2 meters from my router and run the test again. This time I was clocking at 45.7 as a receiver and 45 megabits as a sender. I mean, it's a massive step down, but more or less what you would expect from Raspberry Pi 4 in that band. 
I've switched over to 5 GHz bandwidth and I've seen an improvement in the same tests. As a sender, I would get 93 megabits per second and similar 90 as a receiver. And as the red terminal is using eMMC storage, it made sense to actually test the speeds of writes and reads from that storage. And the write speeds were about 130 megabytes per second, with reads clocking at 530. It's almost as quick as SSD storage in terms of read speeds, but a little bit more on a sluggish side when it comes to writes. So who's going to be taking advantage of Reterminal? Obviously, if you fancy this form factor and you really wanted to get this device, nothing will stop you, especially the device isn't terribly expensive as around $195 on Seed Studio Store. By the way, link in the description. Now, without the add-ons, the high-speed interface add-ons, it's hard to tell what else is going to be possible with this Reterminal. But right now, I think I could recommend this to anyone looking for a small terminal to visualize the data on a included screen. I have a couple of interesting plans that's gonna take advantage of that, so if you're interested how I'm going to use that in my home automation, you definitely want to get stay tuned. Now, I don't have any published calendar or schedule, so use the tools provided by YouTube, you know how it works, I'm not going to explain you all this, but this is the best way to get in touch. Also, if you suggest a new content, I'll have a, a comment with a link. Probably want, uh, you want to use my social media account instead because, well, YouTube likes to filter the comments and I don't have access to that, it's really disappointing. As for now, guys, thanks so much for watching and let me know what you think about Red Terminal in the comment section. And if you're interested, all the links are going to be in the description of this video. Thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.